Hey, Tom here, Flip Anything USA. Uh, so look on my blog, I show people how I made my fortune in real estate, starting at 19, millionaire by 28. I did it all one deal at a time, making five, 10, 15, $20,000 at a time. No big, well, later on I had some big knockouts where I made more than a million dollars on deals, but that's not how I started. And that's what I try to show you. I think most people can relate to starting with little or no money, right? That's where we all kind of start, unless we happen to be in the, you know, the privilege bunch that, that has a, have rich folks and that sort of thing. Not me, that's not me. So anyhow, today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you uh, a little bit and compare my compare how my real estate portfolio to a degree to Grant Cardone's and Ben Mollis and the way that you got three different millionaires. Those guys have much more money than me, uh, but I'm still significant. But mostly I'm gonna show you my reaction to April 1st, April 1st, believe me, millions of landlords just like me, man, what do you think we're doing March or April 1st? We're going, who's going to pay rent? Who's not going to pay rent? Who's going to struggle? You know, we're seeing who's going to make it, you know, because it's important because that's part of, that's how we make our money. I mean, I make my money off of other people's rents, right? I make money off of rent and, and off of the course of the deals I flip. What's really cool is some of the things that happen. Okay. So look, also I got a book, wake up and smell the real estate. You can get it on Kindle or you can get it in paperback. Cost you 10 bucks on Kindle. And within the books and chapters, it, you can boom, you can just go straight to any video that I've, I've got that's relevant to the chapter. Now, look, let's talk about making money because I think that's what everybody wants to do. Let's talk about right now. Let's talk about the, 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 these, these three, the differences between these three millionaires, myself being one of them. And let's go. So let me tell you what's taking place is this is this video is from a couple days ago. It's the third or fourth today, but basically that's, I was kicking back at the lake with my boys. So that's where we start. And then I go and I look at some of my properties and I see how empty they are and different things like that. But it's some of the other events that happened that day that are pretty darn cool. So let's take a look at what happens. Hey, Tom here. Uh, so it's March 1st. April 1st, and uh, of course, this is the day that typically most rents are due. And uh, so today, I thought I'd make my next video on kind of the differences of real estate millionaires. Uh, me being one of them, the other one being Grant Cardone, and the other one being Ben Mala. Uh, you know, I made this video critical of uh, Grant because I didn't like what I heard. I thought it was a heavy sales pitch. I didn't like the way he talked uh, in that pitch. It seemed like he'd be trying to intimidate uh, unsophisticated investors, okay? People that would put up that kind of crap, that kind of stupid talk. Uh, you know, don't be a little bitch. Don't be a stupid baby. Term horizon, you're in it for protect your dough, get your cash flow, and get capital appreciation over long periods of time. If that's you and you got a good attitude and you ain't a little bitch, you ain't a little baby, you ain't cry baby, you ain't stupid baby, you ain't dumb dumb. You know, uh, and then you see this kind of meltdown in desperation. And a lot of people wrote me and they said, you know, and they, a lot of people put in the comments, they could sense his desperation. And of course, that's what stood out to me, number one. And for those of you who think I'm a Grant hater, I'm not. I don't even really know anything about him. That was the first Grant Cardone video that I really watched. I mean, I've seen his face everywhere. And I, I understood he's got this 10 times thing going. And, and then I gathered that he was a salesman. That's really all I knew before I saw that video. But when I watched that video, it, and really, I just—I guess I just hit the video that, I don't know, I, I gotta watch other ones, I guess. I saw another one that's getting a lot of attention with him and, I don't know, the Wall Street guy, the Wall Street guy, I forget, Jordan. Uh, anyways, I just thought it was interesting, the contrast in reactions, okay? Me being the smallest of these three millionaires, okay? Ben, Ben's, you know, two or three hundred million. That's more than I'm worth. And uh, 
Uh, I'm in the tens of millions. Uh, and then you got Grant. I'm not even sure where he's at. I'm sure, you know, if he was worth in the hundreds of millions uh, at one point, I'm not sure about it anymore. And, but just the differences, you know, somebody had commented on my, on my blog and I'm actually, by the way, uh, this is a, a, a lake property. This is my dock. And, uh, uh, I've actually left something in my golf cart. Uh, anyways, uh, it's just the differences in the, the way millionaires react under pressure. And I was watching some Ben Mala this morning. And, uh, you know, when I listen to Ben Mala talk, I, when I hear him talk, I hear myself. And Ben Mala is my kind of millionaire. Retail, all well, the stores are closed. And now I'm getting letters already and they can't pay their rent. I got clients that pay $50,000 a month in rent. So I'm gonna be sitting around with all this real estate with nothing coming in and plenty still has to go out. So I don't know, I feel sorry for a lot of people right now. We gotta just all stay in jail like me, I'm in jail. Don't go near anybody. That's it, that's all we can do until it passes, till everybody has it, they go through it. It's bleeding, I feel like a big pig going in a market, just ready for slaughter. We're both self-made uh, and we both used our own money from what I gather, from what I've heard him talk about. And I've only heard him talk a couple times, but he's real character, I like the guy. And, uh, uh, but he's unpretentious. Uh, He's definitely, uh, you know, an extrovert, and uh, he, uh, but I think he's honest, and I think, uh, 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 anyways, I like what I hear. Where, so, but the difference is, in, in reactions to this downturn, I wake up this morning, and I'm like, oh, this sucks. You know, I got some mail in yesterday and I go, oh, good, rent checks are coming in. And first envelope I open was a, a letter saying, hey, due to the COVID virus, we're unable to pay our rent and we don't take it lightly, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you can fill in the rest. And, and then I got other rent checks and then but I'm at the lake, look where I'm at. I'm at the lake, okay? You know, and I see, see Ben, he's in a $16 million mansion. I think it overlooks the water, I'm not sure. I'm guessing it does, it's, it's, I don't like it's in Florida. And he's like me, he's going, yeah, this sucks. But man, then I see Grant, and I see Grant just kind of coming undone at the seams. Cardone Enterprises, that's not what you want to invest in because that is dependent upon a tenant being in business. <clears throat> you know, in an, an open, over, just saying the wrong stuff, boasting about the 40-60 split that he never really explained at all and probably doesn't want to, I'm guessing, but maybe he will, I hope so. We distributed $2 million to our investors last month. 800000 of that went to me last month. But he's sitting there trying to intimidate to get investors, to get more investors to throw more money his way, uh, trying to sell you know, his card on capital. And then he puts his foot in his mouth the way he did. And then you got Ben, who's more like me, just going, ah, this sucks. Disaster right now, so... I lost all the shit. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't even uh, know. Stock markets <laughs> tore me a new asshole. Even bonds have tore me a new asshole. I'm just uh, totally fucked right now. Let's keep fixing up the ones we got so this way when we, if we have to sell them, then at least they're in good shape. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but the, the, the way we're different is we're not looking for money. I mean, I don't see Ben looking for money uh, or like the same way that, that, that uh, Grant is. He's not, he's not trying to solicit money. If you got cash in the bank and think that the cash in the bank is your security, you're freaking hallucinating. It is not security. You need cash flow. Cash flow is security. Invest with me at CardoneCapital.com. I'll never let you down. He's not trying to calm investors. So believe me, somebody wrote, oh, you're trying to be 
like are you you're a car to own wannabe and that is so far from the truth the last thing i want to do is have to talk and try to calm down you know uh what is it 3100 investors or something like that you know that put in five ten fifteen thousand or whatever they did i don't know the math on that but i you know and i hear all, I see people talking about unaccredited and which i never even thought for a second he'd be dealing with that stuff i, I figured he'd be only accredited investors so you know what i don't know uh but that's the difference when you deal with your own money and and and, and you're not heavily leveraged like i said in my video the other day uh, i'm not heavily leveraged and ben said and his podcast, you can hear what he has to say. Uh, so Ben too, he's like me. He's not heavily leveraged. And that's why he can go, yeah, this sucks. This is unfortunate. And, but he's not panicking and he's not, you know, stammering and, you know, looking uncomfortable and swallowing hard after he speaks. And because that is dependent upon a tenant being in business <clears throat> and all the stuff that we saw grant do the other day and that's where you want to be and if you listen to me talk and if you listen to uh, ben mala talk you see we're just telling you how we did it we're just telling you how we made our money and uh again like i say you know what ben has more money than I do, but I got plenty. I mean, I, I've got a, a house overlooks the lake and I got a dock on the water and I'm comfortable. And you know what, I, I tell you what, this is also interesting, this is pretty cool. So, you know, I get, I start seeing my phone and I know all my tenants, I know all of my tenants, okay? And you know, I probably got a hundred and something, something like that, And but I know all my tenants. I'm not even sure exactly how many I have, but I know them all. And so I see a phone, I go, oh, great. I know he's probably calling me because he doesn't have the money. And then I see another one, I'm thinking, and that was one that I thought, oh, they're gonna, they can survive this stuff. And, uh, but I, and, and I got my boys, I'm done. I see I'm not dropping everything to chase a buck. I'm at the lake. I'm not staying on the phone. I turned my phone off to make this video. That's where you wanna be, comfortable. And that's, the difference of dealing with your own money and dealing with other people's money. You're not accountable to anybody but yourself. So back to my story. So phone rings and I answer that tenant's, the, the second tenant that called and I say, hey, what's up? And she says, hey, Tom, we're thinking about buying a condo, the one we're in, the, the owner wants to sell. And I said, well, man, be careful. Condos are gonna drop fast in my opinion. And the other thing is, is is uh, uh, on the condo part is uh, you don't know what the value is right now. I said, things are adjusting and changing. Things are probably definitely worth less today than they were last week or a month ago. And, uh, and then I realized she told me where the condo was. And I said, hey, wait a minute. I've got a house over there that's beautiful. It's, this is the house, if you hadn't seen it before, I got a house that uh, I bought from the owners and they just stayed there. I bought it from them, and then they've been renting from me for the last, I don't know, 18 months while they built their new home with the cash that I gave them. And I said, man, I got a house just exactly perfect for you, I think. And I said, and if you don't like it exactly how it is, we can remodel it before you even move in. And, and they have cash. They have cash to buy a home. And so I thought, wow, how wonderful, right? My phone rings. We're in the middle of this downturn. And I mean, I'm not worried. People have cash. You know, not, not everybody is over leveraged, folks, believe me. Uh, I'm not, and that's why I'm comfortable. And this person, obviously, they're calling me talking about paying cash for a condo, and I'm trying to convert them into buying my house instead of that condo, and I'm gonna make them a great deal. They've been a tenant for years, so I'm happy to help. And, but I'm also happy to get that cash. And I told myself, man, I want your cash. And, you know, there's no, no bones about it. And that's the beauty when you're comfortable you don't have to compromise. Yeah, I know maybe your values and maybe, you know, you don't have to go for the throat. Like, you know, I just kind of see some of the tactics I've seen. I, d I didn't like what I saw that Grant did. And, and, but I, and, and I understand it. And I'll even tell you a little story. Uh, you know, I, I, I owned a cabinet shop. I started a cabinet shop when I got out of high school. That's where I started. In fact, you, you hear about my first real estate deal. That's what kind of drove that first real estate deal was buying my own building. And so on that deal, 
that first deal I made, that's kind of how I learned about owner financing. And, and that's how I got turned on to a whole new world. And there's all those opportunities are still here for you. Oh, check this out. This is pretty cool. Look at this. I got a duck egg. A duck egg on the dock. Not sure what to do with it. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to touch it. And I got my boys here. I got my twin boys. And so, like, even with that phone call, saying, hey, you know, we can pay cash. I, and, you know, I didn't drop everything. I didn't, I didn't leave this beautiful opportunity to be out, out on the lake with my boys and enjoy this. You know, it's just beautiful. I'm not a person. On, it's just like, you know, a pin drop here. It's beautiful. And it's kind of always that way. Uh, in general, I guess what I'm getting at is that's where you want to be. You want to be comfortable. So uh, back to the story. So I talked to, to the person. I said, hey, here's the combination to the house. Let yourself in. And, and funny enough, I gave them the wrong address. They call me back and they go, Tom, there's, a, there's, a, uh, there's somebody in the driveway. I go, oh, don't worry. The house is empty. I send them, I give them the wrong address. <laughs> Anyways, they called back and then I got them straight away. And now they're actually touring the home now. And, but again, I guess what I'm getting at is you got one guy, you know, just pumping out videos and trying to say, oh, hey, don't worry, everybody calm down. Don't, you know, and, you know, trying to calm his investors and that sort of thing. And then the difference is somebody that works exclusively with their own money, we're chill. I'm chill. Ben is chill. And yeah, we're a little bit concerned. We're a little bit unhappy. But, you know, we kind of feel like we're just spectators the way I see it and say, ah, oh, geez, let's see where this goes. What's going to happen? But, but we're not afraid of being devastated. We're not afraid of bankruptcy. We're not afraid of, of, of you know, what, what might be going through somebody's head that is, uh, uh, that is more leveraged, okay? And that's where I'm at. And uh, anyways, I'm gonna enjoy the dock and I'll come back and we'll, do, we'll talk some more. All right, hey, it's April 1st. Like millions of other landlords, I'm anxious to see what rents come in today. Uh, I know some of my tenants are gonna have troubles. I know others will not have so much problem. Uh, anyways, I've got my bookkeeper uh, keeping me abreast of the mail. The mail that just came in, I told her to text me and uh, give me the numbers. And so that's what you're gonna hear here. And I'm crossing my fingers, I'm crossing my fingers. We're just coming back from the lake. Anyways, so let's hear the numbers. At today's deposits, early $1,210 loan star dollar sign, $1,850 com data dollar sign, 11,500. Shoal Creek, tell $2,140. Sins $8,000 call durations, $1,200. Want to reply? No. Okay. So look, that's a good report. Uh, that was probably, I heard 11,500, 1,000, 8,500, another 2,000, uh, sounds like 20, 22, 3,000 dollars. So that's a good sign. Uh, yesterday, all I got was one letter saying, sorry, I can't pay the rent. And I'll be dealing with that however I have to. Not too bad. Uh, I still have a lot more to go. Yeah, so this is interesting. I'm getting calls this morning and I see one tenant called me and I suspect he's having a little trouble. I had another tenant call me, asked if he could pay his, he paid half his rent. He's gonna ask if he could pay the other half into the week. And I said, sure. And then I have uh, another, you know, I was suspecting a problem, but I uh, was happy to find out it wasn't. Uh, it was a tenant been with me for 10 years, called and said, hey, Tom, I'm looking at buying the condo. The people that own our condo want to sell it. And I want to know what you think. I may have a house sold for cash now as well today. So look, a lot of people save for a rainy, a rainy day. A lot of people are prepared for that. Uh, not everybody is, I understand that. I've been leveraged out. I've been thin on money before. Look, there's gonna be ups and downs. And, but the point is people need a place to work. People that have business, they can't just close their business up. They, that's their, 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 they got more incentive to keep their business than they do where they live. They can always move to somewhere else. But 
when it comes to business, boy, that's where people show up, that's where you're established, and that is important. Uh, I would say, uh, again, I, I think the money's more steady coming in on a business than any apartments. By the way, there's one of my buildings right there. See that giant for lease sign? Visible to the highway back there. That's very important. Always advertise your sign. Make it big. Make it big. It, it just gets people see it and then they imagine their own sign being the size of the sign that you put up there. So don't mess around with your signs. Spend a little money. Make them big. And uh, that house, that, that building was uh, for lease. Actually, just when I just remodeled the, the facade, and I got another video following up on that. All right, so I think I told you I had a tenant call me in. This is the house. I'm gonna try to talk him into buying this house. I think it's a great investment for him anyways. And I'll make him a good deal because I'm gonna get more cash in my hands. Uh, now look at, look at these trees, look how gorgeous this is. So these, they're already due to be here. And actually, I don't even know this property super well as far as how to get around it i'll show you what i'm looking at uh, actually, okay. so yeah take a look look at that tree that tree should be on a postcard look at that isn't that awesome that is so beautiful so the deal with this place is i bought this from tenants that were they, they are I bought it from the people. The people that owned it actually rented it back from me. And I bought it about, I don't know, 18 months ago, something like that. I think I made a video when I did make it. But anyhow, the, the bottom line, it's kept in beautiful condition. Everything is perfect. Uh, it's a little bit dated, but it is beautiful. And... I'm hoping to sell it. I, like again, I, when I got the phone call this morning, I thought the tenants were gonna tell me, oh, hey, we might be having some trouble paying rent. Or, I didn't know what they, what they were gonna sell. But thankfully, they said, hey, we got a chunk of cash. We wanna buy something. And they wanted to buy a condo. And I'm trying to talk them out of buying that condo. And, because I don't think the condo's a good investment anyways. No matter what. I don't care if they buy it or not. But hopefully they, this will be good for them. And that's what I'll be doing. And they're here now. So I will talk to them now. Wearing my uh, handkerchief just to be safe. Don't want anybody sneezing near me. Or, or if likewise. So look, this is one of my properties. You can see the parking lot is damn near completely empty. In fact, it is empty today. I mean, there's a handful of cars, but... This place is usually packed. Usually packed so much that, that you know, your people are driving around looking for a parking spot. Uh, I've got a restaurant, I've got a dry cleaners, I've got a barber shop, I've got a bar, I've got a vape shop, I've got a tattoo parlor, I've got a, you know, hair and nail place, and I've got uh, a caterer as well in here. So, I thought I'd drive around and just show you some of my properties and, and we'll take a look at what's going on and how Somebody like me that owns a lot of offices and, and restaurants and, and uh, you know, off, whatever, commercial flex properties, uh, manufacturing. I've kind of got a little bit of everything, right? And uh, everything's a little bit affected, but not everybody is closed down. If you go over to the, the nail salon, you'll see that they're, they're doing some things uh, by appointment. I don't know what exactly. Uh, and then there's others that are uh, working out of their home, like a lot of people. And then there are some people that are just closed today too, to be quite honest. Um, but let's go from this little strip center to the next property that I have nearby. Obviously can't hit everything, but uh, we'll hit what we can right now. These types of properties that I have is that small business, they make up most of the work, most of the jobs in the USA are all made up by small businesses. They all got to have a place to work. Small, you know, there's shops, there's, you know, mechanic shop, there's all kinds. Uh, we're going to drive by a property I have right here. This one here, I'll just kind of do a quick circle around it. First of all, I've got an office here. Okay. And again, parking lot's mostly empty. <laughs> come around here oh dang okay that's okay 
and across the street I got a family dollar they're doing a little business empty uh, looks like we got some construction work and supplies over there that are open I don't own, I own this one still this is uh, Allstate Insurance they're closed today I've got a uh, jiu-jitsu place I've got a phone repair place that is open over here uh, I've got six food trailers or five food trailers I've got a taco place on the right that's open barbecue has been open they've actually all been doing pretty good business because they're easier to use than restaurants I think at this time uh, and then I got an Indian food truck over there on the far left in the blue and I've got a couple other trailers over there as well that are closed today and I don't know if it's closed because they're closed today or if they're just closed because business is bad but in general the food food trucks have all been doing well uh, and uh, paying the rent that sort of thing and so I think that's been a good thing so we'll drive over here next and I got next to one I'm looking to buy them right now so again I got a property you're gonna see behind me big orange building let's see if you can see it oh yeah that orange building you see in the back it's a big big building it's like 20 something thousand square feet they are skeleton crew we're getting close to one of my next properties uh, I actually had an errand to run in between not that they're that far apart so I've, I've described in the past real estate barbells and basically it's one cluster of property around your work and then another cluster of properties around your home and then the bell or the bell the, uh, the bar between the two uh, weight bells you know those two clusters is the path and that's what we're on right now we're on the path and uh, actually, we just left one of them on the path as well. Uh, that was that uh, retail center. And so now we're coming up to another one that goes along the bar on the barbell. And again, these properties that I have are the exact properties that Grant Cardone said are bad, bad, bad. That's an office building behind you. That is not what you would invest in, okay? Office buildings will get crushed. Those will get crushed. That right there, bad. Cardone Enterprises, that's not what you want to invest in. Okay, and everybody can get hurt in a downturn. Everybody's gonna get hurt to some degree. But again, the idea that, that uh, apartments are bulletproof, no way. Uh, in fact, what, what I know he's concerned about is rents not coming in and the inability to enforce the rules, to, to make them pay rent. You know, you can do lockout notices, you can do different things like that when people don't pay you. And his hands are tied from doing that. And I'm sure the other thing that scares him is the fact that people can get rent. And here, let's look at another property of mine. This is one right here. He said giant for lease sign. Let me show you that. Let's see. Now that's a for lease sign. That thing's over 20 feet long, about five feet high. So that was actually already, that, that's the one I lost, a yoga studio. I had a yoga studio about to move, uh, or about to pull the trigger and sign, sign the lease, lost that lease. Uh, and down here, you can see I got some cars down here. If you can see way over there. And that is a chiropractor uh, or some sort of specialty. I don't even know exactly what everybody does that rents from me, but it would appear that they you know they're a doctor so they are an essential and they are working and so you know there's businesses of all of all kinds and not every one of them are shut down I got a jiu-jitsu school here though too this is the second jiu-jitsu school it's actually one that I go to and uh, they are closed you know the bottom line is people have need a place to work and uh, you know, they, they don't, you know, I mean, look, at the bottom line, if, they, if everything, you know, that's a restaurant I used to own, it's also closed. I don't know, eh, that's back there, a restaurant. And there's actually a couple, a house I own here. That's actually a house I sold. Uh, and as far as I know, the tenant's paying rent on the one that I have there. Let's go buy another one of my buildings here. And 
this is a little like 20,000 square footer and they are not working but this is a company here and that's a pretty big customer actually uh, they got looks like they got a couple people working in the back end you know I uh, got a carpet shop they're closed and looks like we got some people working I got a, uh, another kind of a high-tech company it looks like they have some cars going and then again here it's looking a little bit bare usually this is full of cars I know the photography guy he is not working I got a robotics company there and got FedEx leaving and actually over here this is a school I own this school too right here and they are closed Actually, I used to own that house right next door, too. That was a big one. Uh, that was a 6,400 square foot house, actually. I added 4,400 square feet to that house. Uh, and, all right. So, obviously, we got some people that are out of work. And now here, this is a... I've got accountant in here. And this is another building. I've owned for a long time. And obviously, people are working. This would be an office building. And so I'm not going to drive by everything because I'm damn near home. And also, we're going by the houses, the three day deal, or not three day deal, sorry, the three of the five homes that I'm about to put on the market. You can see that. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Well, I can see the landscapers made it and picked up all the leaves. Man, that's a lot of leaves. Look at all those bags of leaves. And I've been getting calls every day on, on these house, these houses. We stopped on the fence for now. And looks like my guys are painting. Yeah, there we go. Let's see what we got. We're actually, you can see we're painting the floor. Let's go take a look. at this. I own this house and this house in this house and you can see over here that, that that green blanket it looks like that's grass it's just to protect and it's it's that's over seed and then back there we got some of the same going back there and we got a barbecue and other things we kind of put in the backyards here might as well get a quick look hey so that was the day of my life on uh, uh april 1st uh basically so that's an investor my size i've got about 130,000 square feet of properties you didn't see all of them but uh you did see enough you saw enough i think and what you'll see is basically when you own it outright or you own it you're very little leverage it's much less pressure also you can see there's uh you know not everything's all doom and gloom uh you you saw that i had that that lady that called me on the condo i ended up her turned her into a purchase she's buying not the house that I, I showed you in the video i had another house on second over from another street that i hadn't even worked on yet she wants to buy that one so she's already said she'll pay me two hundred and twenty thousand cash for that one that's a deal and then that other house that you, you sh that i showed i ended up selling it to somebody else about an hour ago i got an offer i countered they've accepted so it looks like i've got it sold for 325 and so so there's you know there's half a million dollars right there uh and 225 of that is, is cash from one bar the other one's going to be financed but they're pre-qualified they also have a job they're a health care worker they're going to stay employed right anyways uh so hey just want to give you a look into my life and hey be sure to get if you're if you're just a small investor wake up and smell the real estate Man, I, there is not a better book you can buy. I wrote it. I know. It's all real. Real examples. All the properties I've bought throughout my life. Uh, not complete all of them, but a bunch of them. <laughs> Enough to get you rolling. So, hey, uh, please subscribe and uh, hit the notifications button and you'll, you'll see some live events coming. Thanks.